all's well that ends. Not as bad as it could have, in my way. Careful, I bite. Never a dull. Immediately.
shouldn't have made the me no. enemy. Wonder if the gods are watching me. Some punishment. Thank <laughs> you. 
course. Projection of Gale of Waterdeep. And if you see this manifestation, 
That means I have prematurely perished. However, for reasons that cannot be disclosed, it is of vital importance that my death be remedied at your earliest convenience. You may rest assured that I do not speak out of self-preservation alone. Many lives depend on my return to the living within the span of two days. I trust I've made myself clear. No need. I have upon my deceased person a magical item that can accomplish my return. But such is the value and rarity that it is protected by a multi-layered security protocol. I will now explain the protocol. Step one is to retrieve from my person a pouch I wear over my heart. Next, you must unthread the purple seam that seals it in a counterclockwise fashion. Do not touch any other colored strand. Inside the pouch you will find a folded letter and a tiny flute. Unfold the letter and note the markings in the top and bottom corners. These are the notes you will need to play. Starting from the bottom right, play the notes in correct order, clockwise this time. Upon completion of the tune, a magma method will appear, which will pose the following question. Iskcha Chisnaga. This is ignorant for what is my name? The answer is Kasi Trak Ash. Pronounce the name correctly and the method will breathe on the letter. Stay clear because the little scamp can melt metal. Words will now appear on the letter's surface, effectively turning the letter into a scroll of true resurrection. Use it to bring me back to life. Excellent. Now repeat my instructions back to me, please. In that case, this will be an easy exercise. Step one. And next. Right. You then have access to the letter and the flute. Go on. Remember to play them clockwise. And after that... Correct. But pay attention to the trap part. Ch, ch is back of the throat. And so we have gone through the necessary steps again. It is gratifying to see your memory does not fail you. Best of luck with the protocol. May my cold, dead hands soon be refilled with the warmth of life so they can shake yours in gratitude. Stop me yet. Ah, I need to rest. The sunset can't come quickly. Can't give up now. Can't slow down. A spot of healing will help. Haste. 
let's have a look. So that's progress. Another step forward. Something good here, I hope. Take much more. Take you, you. Heal me, damn you. Is that blood? No, never mind. <sighs> My word, you did it. <laughs> oh, it's good to be alive. My hands are still cold, so that handshake will have to wait, but in the meantime... Thank you. Oh... It's a relief to be back on beautiful Faerun. The dreariness of the fugue plane oppresses one's soul so very quickly. That said, I assume you have some questions for me. Only fair to warn you I have precious few answers to spare. I apologize if that sounds thankless, it's just that some secrets simply cannot be revealed. I 
I suppose that after all you've done for me, I should be at least a little bit forthcoming. Tell you what, I will answer one question that you may have, to the best of my ability, if I can. When I told you I need powerful magic to keep my condition under control, I didn't tell you why. Well, here's part of the why. I am dangerous. Not because I want to be, but because of... an error I made in the past. It makes me dangerous. Even in death. You brought me back to life, and for that I am in your debt. I was surrounded by danger. It could happen again. If it does, bring me back again. You must. For the sake of many. Breathe deep and move. Lady of Sorrows, guide us. Did you want something? Still breathing, despite everything. Hello. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. Here, on the Sword Coast. Impossible. That. that can't be. Oh, 
You're mad! But tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? Curious. Elithids, their technical name, form a hive mind. One shouldn't be able to hear their dark whispers. Unless... That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. I can't attest to the specifics, but I do know that not long after insertion, the host, that's you, turns into a mind flayer. As there's not a tentacle on your head, I can only assume you haven't been infected. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just here in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet God! I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. This setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I want to have a word. Don't waste the step. How can I help? The instructions were easy enough, weren't they? If slightly elaborate. Like I said, I'm dangerous even in death. I'm merely trying to protect those around me. I find that a healthy amount of theatrics, a voice from the beyond, a magic flute, a friendly, if highly combustible, magma method tends to make for a more compelling case. If nothing else, I'm sure I piqued your curiosity. You again. Who knows? Drow? Mind flayers? Death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers. If we can convince the right people to talk. Fool's brows furrow as your minds connect. He sees the burning embers of Joaquin's rest, then Floric's face as she tells you of Raven God's abduction. Hells! Older Raven God's been taken! Then we need to seek him out and get him to safety. You see, Grand Duke Raven Guard is my father. I know I haven't said. Our relation was no matter of pride, not least for him.
You heard right. My father and I were close once upon a time, until he disowned me and cast me out of Baldur's Gate. I can't tell you more. The pact forbids it. My lips are quite literally sealed. He made me an exile. That said, I'm not about to let him suffer at the hands of his captors. I've been asking myself the same question. What makes a Duke of Baldur's Gate so interesting to the drow? Even the houses of Men's Oberanzen would have little use for my father. No, this is no drow plot. These absolute nutters, these true souls are behind his abduction. His absence alone will sow chaos in the city. If they were to infect him, he could lead Baldur's Gate to ruin. All the more reason to find him. The Absolute has seized not just my father, but the future of the Sword Coast. I know, and you're right. My story is one of two men. The Blade of Frontiers, a man hunting the fiends who prey on the weak and claw at the coast. And Will Ravengard, a memory of a memory. A man who belongs to the past. I wanted you to know the blade, not the shadow he left behind. I'm all for it. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the Caldwells, they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Father's the son of a blacksmith born with barely a coin in the coffers. He made a name for himself among the Flaming Fist, brave as Baldurin, stubborn as a deep rofe, daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. <laughs> I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and the talent for courtly dance. It's been a badger's age since I've twinkled my toes. A drunk ogre could put on a better show. <laughs> well, give it some time. Develop a bond and maybe I'll show you a move or two. I promise, Clumsy Oaf is well within my repertoire. May the darkness protect you. Quite the understatement, but yes, I have it. And I'll guard it with my life. I was part of a group sent by my cloister. We were to take the artifact from the Githyanki and bring it to Baldur's Gate, no matter the cost. Though it turned out the cost was very steep. I was the only one of the group to survive. I took the artifact and fled, only to be ensnared by Mind Flayers before I could finish the mission. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. That's not a luxury open to many people. Us included. I have my faith to turn to instead. You should find something of your own. I told you already. I surrendered my memories for the sake of the mission. Shah's secrets must be protected. Duty demands it. Once I fulfill my mission, I can have my memories restored. The wound on my hand. It never quite heals. And sometimes it causes terrible pain to rip through me. It's my burden, though, from Lady Shah. I can feel her influence somehow. I'll try my best. 
but secrecy is ingrained in me. Lady Shah considers it greater protection than any shield or armor. I cannot say. Not with what I can recall. But even then, it would not be for me to question her will. Lady Shah has her reasons. It's difficult to say. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me, punishing me, testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure. It's less difficult than you might imagine, when you can't remember life without it. Pain is sacred to followers of Lady Shah. Pain will give way to loss and then to the peace of her eternal darkness. You can tolerate a great deal of suffering so long as it has meaning. I'm sure you do. But please try to understand that it's not something I can just talk about freely. I said, not for discussion. Fine. Just keep out of matters that don't concern you. Very well. Perhaps there's potential in you. Let's see how you handle this. I am indeed a disciple of Shah. Mistress of the Night and Lady of Loss. I assume you've heard of her? My Lady Shah is the Night Singer. The patron of darkness and loss. Most fear the dark, like children, because in darkness they see their fears reflected. But Shah teaches us to step beyond fear, beyond loss. In darkness, we do not hide. We act. Pain, hope, the promise of better days. All of these are heavy cloaks that bend our backs and burden our hearts. We shed those cloaks. Before Shah, we stand gloriously naked, beyond the vanities of mortals. We tear down the lies the world is drunk on. The institutions they trust, the so-called gods they worship, the lives they cling to. We destroy false idols. Topple corrupt organizations, fight heretics wherever they're found. There's often suffering, death even. Many people break before they embrace Shah's truths. You're wiser than most. Many people balk at our doctrine. It's the reason why we cherish secrecy. You've a habit of saying all the right things. Either you're very glib, or we're kindred spirits. Maybe both know myself. But yes, once we've saved ourselves, we can talk more on this. You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? She took me in when no one else would. Without her, I wouldn't be alive. She's my mother. She nurtures me, cares for me, loves me. 
Don't believe the lies the Salunites tell. What? Besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? It's a deal. Quite literally, I mean. With my memory suppressed, I can't betray Shah's secrets. And I can't remember much of myself, either. If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, then my memories will be restored. Of course. It is an act of faith, not to be undertaken lightly. Shah will reward me when I succeed. I think I know what you mean. There's an undeniable rapport, and yet we haven't made time for each other. Time alone. Easily remedied, if you like. I know a place. Not just yet. Let's choose our moment. Some quiet night, when the others are asleep and there's no distractions. I'll come for you. Fine. What's on your mind? Does it even need to be asked? We're beyond me merely liking you. I think I'm a different person owing to you. What can I do you for? Help me kill those paladins of Tyr, and I'll tell you, a bit of good gossip for your good help. Here goes nothing. I came just in time. You are transforming. Yes, you have. I saved you before. And I'm here to save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. We haven't much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you, but for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it.
fight for the fate of Faerun. A fight we are losing. For now. You can change that, but only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. Hello. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. Don't fidget. The needle must slip behind your eye, not through it. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots mm. through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I have it! The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Stop. Now? Regrettable. Mark my words. Ceremophosis will be far more painful than this procedure. My name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. There are many answers to that question. None are important. There 
is a great divine energy indeed, but the source is unclear. Beyond mortal realms, there doth exist an amalgamation of spirits akin to thine own, ensnared by the treacherous cult of the Absolute, felled in its name. They bear great discontentment with their destiny. For a mere pittance of coin, I might summon the worthiest among them to lend aid to thy undertaking. Most willingly, forsooth. Their passions doth run deep for what hath been wrought upon them. Suspicion always haunts the guilty mind. My services are all that I can proffer thee. What thou wilt do with them is for thee to undertake. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. Because it is my calling, there is little else to explain. A matter of coin. Then I shall wait here patiently until it is acquired. Very well. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? Very well. Impossible. Thy party is full.